Can prayer and theology mix? Isn't theology for the smart people and prayer for the spiritual people? How wrong you are. Hi, my name is Terence and I'm your host for Reading and Readers, a podcast where I review Christian books for you. Today, I review Prayers for Knowing God by Tony Evans, 190 pages, published by Harvest House Publishers on February 2021. It's available in Amazon Kindle for $6.64 as of this recording, but it's free from Faith Life for August as part of their free Book of the Month program. By way of introducing this book, let me describe how it's organized. After the introduction chapter, there are 54 chapters. Each chapter is a prayer. And at the end of the book, we have Appendix A and Appendix B. Appendix A is titled The Urban Alternative, which describes Tony Evans' uh, list of ministry. And there is a variety of them, and a very uh, large scales, broadcasting, uh, sports, and, and you name it, he, he has it. Um, appendix, B, appendix B is titled The Doctrine of God. At the top of this appendix, in brackets, it says, Note, first appeared in the Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship Leadership Manual 2001. Now, this appendix is a study outline. So, it came out of that leadership manual. And the main headings are, number one, the knowledge of God. Number two, the revelation of God. Number three, the triunity of God. And number four, the character of God. And tucked within these headings, you will read about the importance of knowing God, arguments for God's existence, the Trinity, how they are distinct and how they are united. And we have a 17-point list of the characters of God with familiar ones like omnipresence, omnipotence, together with less familiar ones like self-existence and immutability. Now, what, about, what I'm about to say next is a completely fictional story, all right? So, I'm just making this up just to explain what this book is about, okay? So, it's a completely fictional story. It's not coming from anywhere from Tony Evans, the author. Once upon a time, the Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship men were tidying up after an invigorating Bible study. John, one of the members, says to Pastor Tony Evans, Pastor, this is amazing stuff. I never knew all these things about God's transcendence, His wisdom, His self-existence. Man, it's so good. I just wish there was something I could do with all this knowledge. Pastor Evans then says, Well, you could pray with it. You must be joking, Pastor. Oh, you're not. How, how do I pray with these things? I mean, I pray with the ACTS structure, adoration, C for confession, T for thanksgiving, and S for supplication. I don't know how to pray with the doctrine of God. Pastor Evans then replies, No, John, no, John. You pray with ACTS as you normally do, but you prayed with the doctrine of God. You say something like this, I adore you, God, for you are holy. I confess I am not holy. I give thanks that you bring me near to your holy throne. I ask that you make me holy like you. So that is ACTS, but with the doctrine of God. Then John replies, Oh, right, sure, pastor. You can do that for the holiness of God. But I bet you can't pray like that for all of God's attributes here, can you? And that's how this book came to be. Tony Evans took the bet, or he saw it as a heavenly mission, or perhaps a publisher's challenge, and wrote an entire book where every chapter is a prayer using the ACTS formula on each attribute of God. That is the origin of today's book at least in my imagination. <laughs> um, back in the real world, Evans writes that many of the prayers in this book were based on Appendix B, which was drafted uh, many decades ago. It was written in 2001, so that's uh, two decades ago. But uh, who knows? Perhaps it was an encounter, as I described, that somehow over time led to this book. Chapter 1 is titled, Knowing God Through His Holiness. Chapter 2 is titled Knowing God Through His Separation from Sinfulness, and on it goes for 54 chapters. The last chapter, 
chapter 54 is knowing God through His overarching power. Now, as uh, something like what John said, maybe it's easy if you have an easy attribute to pray with. Let's pick an attribute of God that some of us may have problem praying with. Let's look at chapter 32. Knowing God through His immutability. I'll read the entire chapter. It's not too long, uh, and if you listen attentively, you will know what to expect from the entire book. The chapter begins with a quote from Malachi uh, 3 verse 6. I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. End quote. There are four subheadings, which is true for every chapter. You have these headings, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Supplication means um, prayer requests, uh, things that you ask for, petition. So under the subheading of adoration, I quote, Father, so much has changed and continues to change in our world. What seems like normal morphs into a new normal before our eyes. What we are told one day is contradicted the next, or so it seems. Yet one thing remains the same. Despite all the changes we go through on earth and with one another, you remain unchanged. Your immutability means you are a God who changes not. I praise you and worship you for your changelessness in the ever-changing continuum we call life. Let people see your stable ways, Lord, so we can all praise you and seek your security in all that we do. Let us, as a church body, worship you more fully and frequently for the constancy that is truly who you are. The next subheading is confession. Lord, I confess that change can frighten me. Too many changes carried out too quickly can leave me feeling anxiety and dread. When I don't know what to expect or what lurks around the next corner, my emotions sometimes get the best of me. I confess that I haven't come to know your immutability as deeply and intimately as I should. Forgive me for looking at my circumstances or the circumstances of our world more than I look at you. In you I will find peace, security, strength and assurance. Your immutu immutability is the blessed assurance my soul seeks. Under the next section, Thanksgiving, I quote, Heavenly Father, thank you for your dependability. Thank you for always being stable. Thank you that even though society sometimes looks as if it's on the precipice of crumbling before our very eyes, you are calm, assured, and unchanging. Nothing catches you off guard. I consider that pandemics can spread around the world, but you are not taken by surprise. You know what will happen, and you are ever present to provide guidance and wisdom as we navigate the onset of such times. Thank you for your loving care, which is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Under supplication, I quote, Holy God, I want to be more solidly like you in what I feel and in my actions. I don't want to allow my emotions to dictate my choices. I want your word to take root so deeply within me that I too am stable and unchanging despite what life puts on my plate. I ask for this intimacy which will produce a greater inner peace and stability for me. I ask to know you more and to love you more completely. Help me understand the importance of understanding that my identity comes tight to you and the assuring love you give. When I do, then I can rest in your unchanging love, peace and provision. In the in the incomparable name of Jesus Christ, I pray this prayer in honour of your unchanging nature. Amen. End quote. So that is the sort of... Uh, uh, chapter that is that you will see in all 54 chapters. You're going to have those four subheadings. And uh, in terms of organization, it's a simple book, okay? And uh, it delivers what it says on the title, Prayers for Knowing God. And those knowing God is the attributes of God. Now that you know what the book is about, and you have heard one chapter from the book, uh, I would like to share my thoughts. I'll tell you two things that I like and one thing that I don't like about this book. First, first, I like how it bridges uh, theology to Christian living, from the knowledge of God to daily prayer. And you can pray using a structure that you are already familiar with. 
ACTS, Acts, Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and Supplication. Supplication is petition or asking God for things. And we teach new believers this formula. It is practiced by saints, young and old, and while it may seem like an unlikely match, because ACTS is a simple, practical structure of prayer, while the doctrine of God has complex theoretical categories, okay, very abstract categories, well, this book shows that both can come together, and come together nicely without much fuss. Tony Evans shows that you can pray through God's grace, God's plurality, God's patience, using simple everyday language. You don't need to know the details of God's omniscience to write a paper on it, to attend seminars on it, to read books on theology on it. You don't need all that to adore, to confess, to give thanks, and to petition for His favour. The doctrine of God is not the hallowed ground of seminarians. It is an open green field, a garden of delights, beckoning everyone to come in. And this book shows that even the youngest of children can pray through the doctrine of God. So that's the first reason why I like this book. It's clear on its purpose and it delivers on it. The second reason is on what he covers in the content on these uh, attributes of God. Because he is starting from the doctrine of God, the prayers are heavenward. It's, dif it's difficult to be me-centered with uh, when you're thinking about who God is. The things you pray for, the things that you want, are going to be along the lines of, God, I want to be more like you. Or, God, I want to know more about, about you. Now, just a quick disclaimer. I'm not saying it's wrong to pray for your own needs. It's okay to pray for finances. It's right to pray for money, for the bills, and so on. We can pray, God, I want to be happy. All I'm saying is, we can also pray, God, I want to be holy, like who you are to me. So, that, that's the aspect of this book that I enjoy. Um, there's also another uh, aspect about the content, which is that it is Trinitarian in the prayers. Chapter 38 is knowing God through the Holy Spirit. Chapter 43 is knowing God through, his, uh, through knowing His Son, Jesus Christ. Chapter 47, 48, and 49 is knowing God through His plurality, plurality, distinctions, and oneness. Now, these are categories of prayers that are normally not given much thought of. So it's nice to see how one can pray through God's uh, lesser known, uh, less appreciated attributes, which are no less important. Okay, so God's plurality is as important as God's grace. Strangely, when we look at the attributes of God in the chapters in this book, they are not complete. And uh, when I say not complete, I mean not complete by Tony Evans's own measure. In Appendix B, in that uh, twenty-year-old um, study outline, um, there is this section four where he lists seventeen characters of God. Now, some in the list don't make it to the book. Transcendence is missing. The glory of God is curiously missing. I was so surprised by this that I even did a keyword search, the glory of God, and the phrase does not appear in any of the prayers. Um, not that it's not mentioned, but it's not put under the spotlight, so to speak, which is a bit strange because all the other attributes of God are. Um, another one that is, doesn't make the list, or doesn't make the book, is this uh, God's Wrath. It's uh, in the appendix, but we don't have a chapter titled Knowing God Through His Wrath. Although wrath is mentioned in the chapters on mercy, patience, and overarching power. These are not serious omissions because it's kind of covered within the chapters. I'm just surprised to see that these important attributes are missing when uh, other attributes have multiple chapters, as I will show you next. The next thing I want to talk about is the big, big reason why I don't like the book. The book is too long. As I said, the book delivers on what it promises. That is true. The thing is that what it promises can be delivered in a much shorter book. You don't need 54 chapters to show how we can pray ACTS through the doctrine of God, through the attributes of God. 
Evans has done such a great job showing how simple it is to do that, that there really isn't any need to have so many examples, especially when the examples overlap. You have chapter 1, holiness. Chapter 2 is separation from sinfulness, which is kind of, I thought, the definition of holiness, separation. Um, you have chapter 7, which is titled, uh, Knowing God Through His Desire for My Personal Holiness. So, okay, so that's a different aspect of holiness. The thing is that you could lump all those chapters together and no one would be the wiser. Now, you could say that maybe he's doing that because he wants to go deep, he wants to make distinctions between uh, within that attribute of God, within that holiness of God. And I wish that was the case, but uh, listen to what Evan says in his introduction. I quote, Each prayer is directed toward one of the 55 of his attributes, of God's attributes. But they are also crafted to walk you through several of his characteristics simultaneously. For example, the prayer that focuses on God's graciousness includes praise for his mercy. And the prayer directed toward God's attribute of justice includes recognition of his great faithfulness. End quote. So the prayers are not intended to go deep. They are not uh, so-called to make a clear distinctions between the single attributes and, and trying to unpack what it means. The chapters don't really connect. I mean, they, you can see some sort of pattern from one to the next, but they are, don't really build up towards some sort of payoff. They are really more like uh, independent uh, prayers uh, which is kind of broad as because uh, it covers some characteristics simultaneously, as he says. And um, they all have the same four subsections, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And so what happens is the prayer points overlap. When what you say sounds the same from one chapter to the next, they even have the same structure, it comes across as repetitive. And that's the problem I struggled with when I was reading this book. So I decided to turn the boring read into a bit of a game. When I turn to a new chapter, I avoid, I deliberately avoided reading the chapter title. Instead, I would guess, try to guess what is the title based on the contents. Because I had a sneaking feeling, a sneaking suspicion that I would not be able to tell one chapter uh, one chapter's uh, topic from another, the next chapter. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> um, his writing is direct. Uh, he tells you that this chapter is about God's truth, or God's justice, or God's ability to become wearied. And uh, even though he mentions other qualities, other characteristics in that prayer, it's still obvious. It's, great. it's still obvious which one is the anchor attribute, which one is the main attribute that he is praying from. So there is that repetition, but it's not as if there is no distinction. So I guess uh, in that sense, um, I was mistaken. Then what am I complaining about? And I would. I've given it some thought and I, I've concluded that uh, the reason why I don't like this book so much is because I'm coming to it as a book to read and not as a prayer guide to pray with. And uh, is it too much to expect to have a prayer book that reads well? Listen to this prayer from another book. Okay, I quote, Lord, keep me from yielding to sin. Whatever I suffer, how could I do such wickedness? How could I neglect this duty and sin against you, God? For your sake, Lord, let me not sin against you. You are good. You are kind. You are gracious. You are holy. Will I sin or rebel? For your sake, Lord, I will not do it. I will not do it for my own sake. In sinning against God, I sin against my own soul. Sin and death. Sin and hell are linked together. Even if it were not so, Lord, I will not sin against you. You are good in yourself and good to me. You are my God and my Father. End quote. There is more, but I will stop here. That prayer is from Piercing Heaven, Prayers of the Puritans, edited by Robert Elmer. It's a, quote, collection of carefully selected prayers from leading Puritans. End quote. To me, the Evans book is like a paint-by-numbers book. 
I don't mean that as an insult. A paint by numbers book directs people through a formula to create a piece of art. And if Evans can get you to pray through a formula towards some sort of uh, destination, which is a doctrine of God, he has achieved his goal. Along the way, you also know a bit more of God's attributes. And I think that is what he intends. So that's great. It delivers on what it promises. The Puritan prayer book, on the other hand, this uh, collection of carefully selected prayers, is not paint by numbers. It's a gallery showcase of masterpiece. Uh, reading it, you sense the soul in anguish, in delight, in awe, and, and your soul as the reader comes alongside the prayer. I don't like Tony Evans' book because I find that it's poor reading. It might be good praying, maybe, I'm not sure because that's not how I'm reading it, but for reading, no, not really. And that made me reflect. I don't like the Evans book and I like the Puritan one. Is it because I am a snob? But I tell people that when you pray, you should not put on an act. Prayer is not a public demonstration of how, how good your vocabulary is or how you pray in a, in a more holy tone. Pray as you speak. Don't put on another person's voice. Yet at the same time, I also say that when you pray, reach deep into your heart. Go deep into your knowledge of God. Go deep into the desires of your heart and bring what you find there out into prayer. And that's the part I don't see in the Evans book, in contrast to the Puritans. The Evans book just reads like a template for everybody to pray with, which maybe that's the aim. And it's not, it doesn't sound like a personal prayer of someone in deep communion with God. To be fair to Evans, he did welcome you to inject your own words into the prayers he has here. Rather than force a person to make a choice between uh, these two books, I suppose the solution is really quite simple. Your shelf is big enough for more than one book on prayer. <laughs> you can learn how to pray ACTS through the Doctrine of God from Tony Evans. You can also learn how to pray deep, soul-wrenching prayers from the Puritans or the like. For myself, I think Evans could have taken that list in Appendix B and expand on each point, then give two, three, five examples of praying through Acts, ACTS. Instead of readers praying Evans' prayers, they could reflect on each attribute and pray from there. You will get a much shorter book, maybe around 20, 30 pages, but it would, in my mind, pack the same punch. But others may appreciate how they can systematically pray through God's attributes, one chapter at a time, as a form of discovery and prayer at the same time. If you are that person, then this book is for you. And along with Tony Evans, I would say, if this book gets you to pray and know God at a deeper level, that can only be a good Thing. This is a Reading and Readers review of Prayers for Knowing God by Tony Evans, 190 pages published by Harvest House Publishers on February 2021. It's available in Amazon Kindle for $6.64 as of this recording, but it's free from Faith Life for August as part of their free book of the month program. The next book I review is a handsome piece of work you will get an answer to the question, Why God? Man, now I know. So subscribe to Reading and Readers and get more book reviews and thoughtful reflections. Until next time, take care.